Hey everyone, Joe here. I wanna show you that you can indeed get fantastic sounding electric guitar recordings from home that rival recordings that you'd get out of a professional studio. And I'm even gonna be using relatively budget equipment. So as long as you're starting off with a great tone, so you're happy with the tone from your guitar and amp, I'm gonna show you how to best capture that tone for your music. If you don't have a mic and amp, I will leave a link on the screen and the description. Uh, just going over how to get great sounding DI recordings, direct input, but today we're recording through an amp using a microphone. The video is split into three parts. Firstly, I'll be going over the gear that you need. Then I'll be going over how to set up your gear to get the best sounding recording. And then in part three, we'll be recording and you'll get to hear the results. Let's get to it. First off, it's the guitar and the amp. Now this is the most important thing to get right, because if you're recording a guitar tone that doesn't sound great to begin with, then it doesn't matter what mic you're using, what preamps you're using, it's not going to sound great as a recording. So make sure that you're happy with your guitar and amp, make sure that your guitar has fresh strings, it's all tuned up and good to go. I'm going to be recording two different guitars today to show you a couple of different tones, and I'm recording through a PV Bandit 112 combo amp. For recording at home, using a combo is absolutely fine, uh, I wouldn't suggest going too small with the amp um, I mean there are you know some amps are better than others but generally as you get smaller they'll start to sound a little bit more sort of boxy um, and it'd be harder to get a really punchy recording out of it. But you don't need a huge 4x12 stack to get a good recording. As for the recording gear, you'll need an audio interface uh, with one XLR input or two XLR inputs if you want to record two mics, which we'll be going over later. You'll need a dynamic microphone and of course a mic stand to hold it and an XLR cable to plug it in. Now of course dynamic microphones aren't the only option. There are condensed microphones and ribbon microphones and you can get some fantastic recordings out of uh, using ribbon and condenser microphones. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna be using dynamic microphones. We're recording from home, so likely your room isn't gonna sound perfectly tuned like a recording studio. Um, and with dynamic microphones, they don't capture much of the room sound, especially when they're in front of a loud amp, you'll barely be picking up any of the room so sound. So that's one of the important aspects of this method in getting a really clear and punchy recording. If you're looking for a microphone recommendation, then I recommend picking up a trusty old Shure SM57. It's your best bet for a reliable recording. It's not They're not too expensive. You can pick them up secondhand as well. And they really do sound good. I know it's almost a cliche at this point, but thousands of great records use the Shure SM57 microphone for the guitar recordings. And a recent recording session I did with Dave Kilminster, I tried four different mics. There was a ribbon in there, a condenser, a couple of different dynamic mics, and he preferred the SM57 out of all four. It's probably the cheapest one of, out of all four as well. But I'm going to be dual miking with an Audix i5 as well, another great dynamic microphone. Now you don't have to use two, but it can be a great option if you have the budget so you can capture two different sounds and blend the two together. Also be able, you'll be able to hear the difference between the two mics. Um, it, maybe you'll prefer one of the other, but if in doubt, go with the SM57. Now let's head over to the recording area and get things set up. So we've got the amp in position. As you can see, we've got the two microphones connected up, very close, pointing directly at the speaker of the amp. Now, even though these dynamic mics don't pick up a whole lot of room sound, it's still important to position your amp in an area of the room or an area of your home that minimizes room sound. So for example, in front of the amp, I've got soft furnishings um, just a, a couple of feet away from it. Behind the amp, I've got this sort of mattress laying up against the wall. Now you can get more professional sort of amp boxes that will create a sort of wall of acoustic materials around your amp, but really it's not gonna make a huge amount of difference as long as you just minimize the reflections as much as possible in the area around the amp and we're using a close miking technique that will avoid picking up too much room sound anyway. So with the microphones, as you can see, we've got them just about a centimetre away from the, the grill of the amp itself. Now, you could get away with about an inch away. Any further away than that, you are going to start to pick up more of the room sound. Um, you don't want it touching the amp itself because it's going to pick up vibrations, but just very close. And in terms of exactly where you're pointing to on the front of the amp, the closer you point your mic to the centre of the cone, the cone of the speaker, the more high frequencies it's gonna pick up. So if you want this kind of harsh, 
uh, very distorted metal tone, you're probably going to want to be moving towards the center. If you want more of a, a warmer, full body tone, you're going to be moving away from the center of the cone. But part of the recording sage is the sound check. So wherever you have your mics positioned, once you've listened back after you've taken a test recording, you can always move them before you make your full recording. And then of course, it's a case of turning your amp on and getting your guitar tone right. So making use of your EQ settings. Uh, this amp has a, a built-in reverb. We're gonna be using a little bit of that. But when you're setting your guitar and amp settings, don't worry about the actual recording at that point. You just wanna set it to sound exactly how you want it. And then we'll worry about actually capturing that sound when we get to the part three, the recording stage. Right, recording time. Now I'm recording over a backing track that was provided to me by the Guitar Ninja. If you're learning how to play guitar as well, then definitely check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. There'll also be a link to the video that I'm recording this for, where he's asked a bunch of guitarists to do their own take over this backing track. It's a really cool idea. So feel free to have a look at that as well for the finished product. Now, before you record your full take for whatever you're recording, you always must do a test recording. It will take you a few minutes and it will guarantee you a great tone so you're not disappointed with the end result after. So I already took a test recording when I was checking out the tones, um, but yeah, you wanna make sure that you're not recording too hot, that you're well below that zero dB mark. I try and record so the meters aren't going anywhere over sort of minus 10, minus 12 dB. Um, and then also you can make changes to your amp settings and the mic placement depending on if you're happy with the sound or not. But without further ado, let's record some guitar. And then of course, once you've recorded all your tracks, have a listen back, make sure you haven't missed anything and you're happy with your recordings. So that's the process of how I recommend you record studio quality electric guitar at home. Let me know in the comments section below, how are you gonna be recording your guitar? What's your setup? And if there's anything you need clearing up, just ask in the comments as well. And for more recording tutorials, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.